it's a little, it's, it is little understood just how much our values are shaped by the monetary system. Our values are influenced by the media for the benefit of the establishment. We call them the unholy three. The military, the corporations, and the banks. For the most part, they determine the public agenda to serve their own narrow self-interests. They perpetuate the illusion that society's values are determined from the ground up. They do this through empty words such as patriotism, democracy, and freedom. What we have all over the world is managed news for and by the establishment. They produce the books, the magazines, the newspapers, the movies, the TV shows, the education, and the entertainment, which in turn shapes our values and the way we think. In other words, we have an established society that works for a few, and it gives us our values in, in order to keep things as they are for their benefit. Most important, when the corporation's bottom line is profit, all decisions are made not for the benefit of people or the environment, but primarily for the acquisition of wealth, property, and power. For instance, if your country really cared about you, they wouldn't outsource jobs for lower wages elsewhere. What if all the money in the world suddenly disappeared? As long as we had arable land, factories, technical personnel, and other resources existed, we could build anything we wanted to build and fulfill most of our needs. The Venus Project advocates that with today's ingenuity and technology, we could easily overcome scarcity, which really is the cause for most of our problems, such as war, poverty, corruption, and aberrant behavior. We could accomplish this through implementing a resource-based economy. This is a very different concept than anything that's gone before. It's not communism, socialism, capitalism, or fascism. To put it simply, a resource-based economy uses resources rather than money, and all people have access to their needs without the use of money, barter, credit, taxation, or any other form of debt or servitude. In other words, all the Earth's resources are held as the common heritage of all the Earth's people. You know, when you think of it, the real wealth of any nation is not its money, but its resources and the people who are working toward the elimination of scarcity for a more humane society for everyone. If this is still confusing, consider this. If a group of people were stranded on an island, but they had gold, they had lots of money, they had diamonds, but the island had no water, no arable land, no fish, their wealth would be irrelevant to their survival. Money is not what people need. Rather, it's the access to the necessities of life. In a resource-based economy, resources would be used directly to enhance people's lives all over the world. If we manage our resources wisely, we could easily produce the necessities of life and provide a very high standard of living for everyone. This may be hard to believe, but even the wealthiest of today would have a much higher standard of living within a resource-based economy. When science and technology is unleashed into the social system directly to improve people's lives without restrictions of money, the marketplace, or patents, we could then begin to know what it really means to be human. 
In a resource-based economy, children would be taught how to be problem solvers instead of the parasitic professions that we're taught today, such as bankers, advertisers, insurance people, real estate, law, politics, and sales, just to name a few. These professions really don't contribute anything to the well-being of people's lives. When all the Earth's resources are shared, there will be no need for the military. This savage profession could easily be surpassed in a resource-based economy. These people are trained merely to be killing machines. How wonderful it would be if they were sent back to school and learned how to be problem solvers instead and taught how to bridge the difference between nations without violence. When all the Earth's resources are managed and shared as the common heritage of all the world's people, the artificial barriers that separate nations would no longer be necessary. Invasions of countries purely for resource theft would be a thing of the past. And that's really why we invade other countries. It's not to bring democracy and freedom, as they tell us in the United States, but it's really to get resources, cheap labor, or access to strategic locations. In a resource-based economy, instead of fighting one another, over scarce resources, people will be working towards problem solving that's common to all, such as the risk of heart disease, tsunamis, cancer, or earthquakes. Remember that every new concept originally was ridiculed, rejected, and laughed at when first presented, especially by the experts of the times. All new ideas, such as so, for social betterment, including women's rights, black rights, and child labor, have always been met with great resistance. During the times of the Wright brothers, the distinguished scientists of the times were writing books and exclaiming why man can't fly. But the Wright brothers didn't read those books and went right ahead and built the flying machine. When science is applied with human and environmental concern to the way we live, we could easily create abundance for everyone. We will eventually understand that most crimes that fill our jails are a result of the need to acquire money and property in an age of often contrived scarcity of the monetary system. Children will look back and wonder why we couldn't see the limitations of this vile system. Being civilized is an ongoing process. There are no utopias and no final frontiers. All things change and are in a continuous process of social evolution. Those countries that try and freeze and keep things as they are, they will be surpassed. Thank you.